morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for your patience and waiting. We're actually just uh, been to go to uh, uh, we're getting a tour of the operations center here. So uh, just wanted to thank you all for coming and uh, uh, the attention that everyone's given to this uh, very important event. I want to thank uh, Secure Works, uh, Dell Secure Works, for hosting us here today and uh, I appreciate uh, the partnership, the public-private partnership that we're developing and uh, in helping to protect uh, the state from any kind of cyber uh, intrusions, disruptions, or attacks. And those are the kind of the, the way I think of it. It's a, uh, a lot of times we think about cyber attacks, but really it's kind of a three-level thing that we're trying to uh, prepare for, protect against. And although we're never going to be able to uh, protect from uh, and, and prepare for every contingency, we try to do you know, the, the, the very best we can in any security situation, try to make it as difficult for the bad guys, uh, or you minimize the disruptions that can take place from things like a uh, natural disaster, and uh, hopefully we get it right uh, most of the time. But in, in my in my experience, even the NSA, as good as they are, we have the best uh, capabilities in the world for preventing cyber attacks. Uh, it's a uh, it's, it's very difficult to steer one step ahead of the bad guys. Obviously, technology changes quickly, and and, uh, and, and the threats that we face uh, evolve and, and change uh, daily. And uh, so we have our work cut out for us. But I'm very proud of the fact that. Rhode Island, once again, is leading the way, and uh, the, the more we can do, again, to uh, protect our, our critical infrastructure and, uh, and protect uh, our, our cyber networks and ultimately our, uh, our citizens, the better off we will, we will be. So uh, with that, uh, let me begin by, again, saying how proud I am to be here today to join you uh, for this very uh, important announcement, and I'm very proud to represent a state that really does continue to be a uh, national leader in efforts to keep our critical networks safe from cyber threats. Um, the cyber disruption team that we're announcing here today is a critical part of that effort. Uh, the Rhode Island State Police, the Rhode Island Emergency Management Agency have demonstrated great leadership in this initiative and I want to begin by thanking and acknowledging uh, Colonel Steve O'Donnell from the Rhode Island State Police who is with us here today uh, and Team Commander Lieutenant Nick Natella of the Rhode Island State Police uh, and Director David Smith and Director, uh, Deputy Director Ed Johnson and Regional Catastrophic Planner Teresa Murray uh, from Rhode Island uh, EMA who are here uh, with us as well. Uh, also, in particular, I want to thank uh, Dell Secure Works and the uh, uh, the Director of Security and Risk uh, Consultant here, uh, Alan White. Uh, we're fortunate to have a very talented and experienced team of individuals who understand our vulnerabilities in cyberspace and the damages that uh, would most likely would severely affect uh, Rhode Islanders. They're certainly taking a, a exactly the right approach by preparing for the inevitability uh, of cyber threats. Uh, and cyber attacks before we face uh, a, a serious problem. Uh, and uh, I've said that uh, there are, it's, it's a very difficult since this is a, a moving target uh, to identify and get against uh, things like uh, cyber intrusions, disruptions, uh, or attacks. So, uh, and uh, we say that I've impressed upon my colleagues uh, in Washington uh, that it is this sense of urgency, I think, that is really required uh, nationwide. And the people that are in this room obviously take that this issue very seriously. Our digital networks uh, have obviously become, a, a, become critical uh, to our way of life. We all know how uh, important the internet has become uh, for communication, and, uh, social networking, and uh, commerce, and even for, especially for, for national security. Uh, but, uh, uh, but with those, those uh, that reliance becomes uh, both their vulnerabilities that, that exist. They, obviously, our systems run our hospitals, our financial system, and even our power grid Yet this reliance, again, also brings significant vulnerabilities and challenges. The networks that support our, our critical infrastructure have suffered uh, repeated cyber intrusions uh, with sensitive information being stolen from both government and private uh, sector networks every day. Uh, that includes, uh, fortunately, within our uh, classified networks. But uh, intrusions, however, are only a tip of the, the digital iceberg. Uh, attackers can slip uh, silently into these networks to manipulate data uh, and, and even alter physical machines they can control. They can also uh, penetrate our systems and implant things on our systems, a zero-day exploit, for example, that you wouldn't even know uh, was there until it was actually executed. And the scary part about it, and I've had this conversation with General Alexander, who heads both the NSA and, and uh, Pentagon Cyber Command, and uh, he has uh, rarely ever seen a, something bad on our networks that hasn't been there for at least six months. That's pretty sober. Uh, so, uh, they, uh, one only needs to contemplate the degree to which uh, we rely uh, on automatic safety systems uh, of 
passenger rail lines, water treatment facilities, and even nuclear power plants or our electric grid to recognize the serious risks that are presented by this critical reliance on the internet. Uh, as a member of both the, the House Armed Services Committee as well as the House uh, Intelligence Committee, uh, I've seen time and again how technological solutions you know, have failed to protect our most sensitive data. Uh, things like uh, insiders with access to uh, and, and malicious intent, uh, thumb drives carelessly installed on government computers, including getting on classified networks, uh, and emails seemingly sent from trusted friends have all wrought uh, havoc or, or destruction uh, on our network, despite the U.S. having the, the best informed and the most sophisticated defenses available anywhere uh, in the world. So this leads me to conclude that the government alone cannot provide uh, the necessary protection that we need for the American people uh, or even our, our own networks. Uh, one of the things that is so important about the effort that we're announcing here today is that it is a uh, critical partnership uh, that brings together both private talent and flexibility with government resources and expertise. The cyber disruption team will include industry partners like Dell Secure Works uh, and academic specialists from Roger Williams University to supplement our state's uh, already robust cyber expertise uh, among the state police and the Rhode Island Emergency Management Agency. This team is built uh, in, uh, in parallel with efforts among our uh, other Rhode Island educational institutions and businesses to create a larger cyber center of excellence uh, in the state. These efforts will help uh, to strengthen our cyber workforce in the state and serve as a national example uh, for state and, and public-private uh, relationships. And I think that, that again, that public-private partnership is absolutely critical uh, that we leverage our very best assets and, and work together to, to do the right thing in protecting uh, the people of an island, uh, critical infrastructure, and, and ultimately I think that this really should serve as a, as a real national model for the rest of the country. So with that, uh, let me just say thank you once again for all your hard work and I look forward to continue to support you in your mission uh, in every way that I can. I'm proud to be with these two gentlemen here today. Let me just uh, acknowledge some of the people that are in the room and I'll turn it over uh, to our to our other speakers in just a second. Uh, uh, Colonel Steve O'Donnell again is in the room with us here today. 